If you're dealing with a no crank or slow crank condition, don't guess, test. Today I'm going to show you how to properly test a starter motor system using three cr critical tests. Cranking voltage, starter amperage draw, and voltage drop testing. This test will tell you if the problem is with the starter, the battery, or the cables. For this test, you will need a digital multimeter, a current clamp or an amp clamp, a fully charged battery, access to the starter, and the battery cables. In order to perform this test, you must first disable the engine, prevent it from starting, because we must crank the engine for a couple of seconds to get a reading. There are multiple ways of doing this. You can either go to your fuse box and find a fuse that powers up your ignition system or your fuel delivery system. In this case, you can use the ignition. There's this fuse that says ignition coil or the fuel delivery system right underneath. It says injector or a fuel pump fuse. By removing any of those fuses will prevent the engine from starting if you're cranking the engine with the ignition switch. Another option you have it's going to the starter relay. In this case, this box here that says start, that will be the starter relay, and you can power up your starter motor from here. So if you look at this fuse box, uh, the starter relay, it's this relay right here. So we pull the relay, kind of wiggle it a little bit so it could come out. Then afterwards, you're gonna find specific terminals, uh, which will be your terminal 87 is the one that powers up your starter motor. Uh, in terminal 30, it's usually battery voltage at all times. So in this case, between these two terminals, you have the voltage and the other terminal, it's the terminal that goes to the starter motor solenoid. And that's the one we're gonna use to power up the starter motor and crank the engine. There are multiple ways of powering the starter motor. What I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use a power probe. And this power probe connects to our battery uh, positive and negative, that powers up your power probe. And by going to the terminal 30 in our relay box, we can send battery voltage directly to the starter motor by applying this button that says battery plus. So we apply this engine should crank. So that's what we're gonna use to crank the engine. If you don't have a power probe, there's other alternatives. You can use maybe a, a tip in and go to the terminal 87. On that terminal 87, uh, how, how do you locate that terminal 87? Well, this relay, it's normally connected like this. If I pull the relay and face it up, I could find out which is my terminal 87 that goes straight there and put a tip in here so I could have access to that terminal and then I could use a jumper lead if I put that jumper lead connected to the S terminal and I go straight to my battery voltage I should be able to crank the engine so that's another way so you don't really need access to a power probe you could also use a remote star switch and connect it to the battery and supply power to this terminal 87 that's another way of powering your starter motor. We'll start with the cranking voltage test. This test tells us if the battery can maintain enough voltage while the starter is working. And also this test will actually tell us the, the health of the starting system. But in order to do this test, your battery has to be in a fully charged uh, state. So we're gonna set our, a multimeter in volts DC, and we're going to connect our leads. The positive side is going to go, the red is going to go to the positive side, the black is going to go to the negative side. And a good starting system, a good battery, will have a voltage to around 12.6 uh, volts if the battery is fully charged. As you can see, this uh, battery voltage is at 12.4, so the battery voltage is slightly low on charge but it should still be enough to perform this test. Ideally, you want a battery to be fully at 12.6, which represents 100%. But when we do this test, we're gonna crank the engine for a period of around 10 seconds. And within those 10 seconds, there will be a voltage drop. 
The voltage drop is the starter motor using current from the battery and it it will put a load on the battery and it's going to create a voltage to drop but this uh, a normal cranking voltage should be around one to one and a half volts meaning if we start here from 12.4 uh 12.48 the voltage should normally drop to around 11.4 or 11 volts if the starting system is in good condition if the battery voltage drops too low that could just indicate that our battery might be weak and that could just determine uh, if the battery is good or not. We could do a test on it and verify. But let's, uh, let's perform this test. We're going to crank our engine for approximately around 10 seconds. And I, I still have my green jumper lead. I'm going to use the green jumper lead. I won't use the power probe. That was another way of doing this. Uh, but let's go ahead and crank the engine. I'm going to just bypass this terminal to a positive wire that feeds the battery voltage. And let's check our volt, our cranking voltage. This will be a period of around 10 seconds. That was a period of 10 seconds and the battery voltage drop went down to around 11 volts. So it roughly dropped around a bolt 1.4 almost a bolt and a half which is that's a normal cranking voltage if that cranking voltage drop way too low normally you want it to maintain above 9.6 when you're cranking the engine but uh it should not drop no more than a bolt and a half from your starting voltage and if your battery's in a good condition the battery should start to recover back up as you can see it's going back to uh 12.36 and slowly might start going up a bit the other test that we're going to perform, it's the starter motor amperage draw test. Uh, to perform this test, we're gonna need a multimeter. Uh, and in this case, I'm gonna attach an amp clamp to it. Or if you have uh, an, a meter that already has an amp clamp integrated, that can measure DC amps. That's important, because uh, we're measuring DC current. So in this case, we need to zero, zero out our tool. In order to zero it out, we're gonna select our meter in millivolts. Uh, notice this, uh, right there it says OL. When we turn on our amp clamp, we're gonna see a couple of numbers there. And then we're gonna rotate this knob until our meter zeroes out. This will be slightly sensitive in some cases. And notice I went a little too far. There it is at zero. And Every millivolt will represent an amp uh, under these settings. So how are you gonna get a reading? Well, this amp clamp could go on your positive side that feeds your starter motor. Can I do it on the negative side? Yes, you can also do it on the negative side because current will be the same on the positive or the negative. Uh, just in case if your, negative, if your positive side is not so accessible, then you could always go straight to the negative side. So in this case, we're going to go straight to the negative side of the <clears throat> of your battery. And then we're going to crank our engine. We're going to crank our engine for approximately around 10 seconds. During that cranking, you're going to see how much amperage the starter motor is drawing. And you have to look at specifications. For when performing the amperage draw test, always look at specifications for the vehicle that you're working with because uh, it could be different from a four-cylinder compared to an eight-cylinder engine. The eight-cylinder engine might require more current draw or depending on the design of the starter motor that the vehicle has. So always look at specifications. So we're gonna perform this test and we're gonna crank our engine for a period of 10 seconds, just like the cranking voltage test. And we're gonna see how much amperage draw you have. At the beginning, you might see a little spike on the a little spike on the amperage, but then it will stabilize and we're going to see the average cranking voltage. When you perform the amperage draw test, ideally you want to do it on the positive side that feeds your starter motor, but sometimes that cable is not so accessible and sometimes your negative side is more accessible than the positive side. But the current should roughly be the same. Current is the same on both positive and negative side of the circuit. We could do both, determine you know if there is a difference. So we're gonna start with our uh, positive side. We're gonna come here and 
bit of amp clamp around the wire that goes to your starter motor. Then we're gonna crank our engine for a period of 10 seconds and get a reading. That's around 10 seconds. And it was averaging the highest, like around 190 amps or so. And then you can switch to the negative side. Now, keep in mind when you do this test, uh, you don't want to crank the engine for too long, uh, mainly because you don't want to overheat your starter motor. So if I do this and move it to the negative side, you want to you want to wait uh, at least uh, a minute or so for the starter motor to cool down and then perform this test. After the motor cools down, let's go ahead and do the the same test on the negative side and crank your engine for approximately 10 seconds. It was roughly averaging around 195 or so, uh, almost the same positive and negative side. And now you, you might uh, think you could use your multimeter and set the minimum and maximum settings that will tell you the maximum amperage. But just keep in mind that when you initially crank the engine, there is a high amperage draw because your engine is just standing still. So it requires more current for the starter motor to initially start cranking your engine. But once the engine has that momentum, that's when you get that reading after three to four seconds of cranking, that's when you get the actual measurement. Now we're going to perform one of the most important tests, a voltage drop. We're checking how much voltage is being lost in the cables and connections and switches. In this case, our positive lead from the meter, the red lead is connected to the M terminal. So these are the three terminals from the starter motor. Uh, the one on the top is the B terminal. That's the one that is connected directly to your battery voltage. The small uh, connector is the S terminal that powers up your solenoid. And the M terminal connects to the motor inside our starter motor. So there is a switch between terminal B and M. So that's why we want to check the entire system. So what the, this red lead is connected to the M terminal of the starter motor. And then we're gonna go straight to the <clears throat> positive side uh, of the battery, of the post, and we're gonna set the meter in volts DC. And the number that we're looking for, this number should not exceed 0 0.5 or 500 millivolts. That's the maximum allowed voltage. and or black lead of the meter is going to go straight to the terminal, the post, straight to the post of the battery, because there's a connection between the post and the terminal. So you go straight to the post, and then we're gonna crank our engine for approximately 10 seconds or so. So we crank our engine, The maximum uh, average measurement was around 0.2. And like I said, I don't want to use the minimum max because at the initial crank, as you notice, it went like to around 0.4 or so. But that's because of the high current draw at the beginning. But you want to measure when the engine already has that momentum of cranking. So it, it approximately read around 0.2. So that means connections on the positive side at the battery, connection at the starter motor, the switch between the terminal B and M and the cable from the positive side to the starter motor are in good condition. Let's test the ground side of the circuit. The red lead is connected to the starter housing. So what, right where it bolts to the engine block, you can either use the housing or a, this housing here, as long as you put your meter on the housing. Do not put the meter in paint because paint is not really a good conductor. Make sure it's the aluminum part of the starter motor. That's where we have the red lead. 
the black lead is going to go straight to your battery negative the the post straight at the post and we're going to crank our engine and we're going to see what kind of readings that we get notice the reading that we have here went to around 0 0.6 0 0.620 that's like 6, 620 millivolts that's a lot for the negative side on the negative side we have a very high voltage drop the maximum allowed on the negative side is 0 0.2 0.2 uh, millivolts uh, not 0.2 millivolts 0.2 volts that means 200 millivolts that's the maximum in our case our reading exceeded too high there is a problem on the negative side i i made a different video regarding this issue on this car that is more detailed and how to find exactly where the source of the problem is so i will put the link below so you can see it as well and then you could get a thorough understanding of uh, the voltage drop testing Here's the key takeaway. Low cranking voltage equals a weak battery. That means you started at 12.6 or so, cranked the engine and the voltage dropped too much. That could be just a weak battery. High amperage, that could be a failing starter motor or a mechanical issue. Whether your starter motor is shorted and is drawing too much amperage or your engine is binding, it's mechanically ceased. So that could be the mechanical problem. The high voltage drop uh, it's because you have a problem on cables or connections. And if you need to go more thoroughly on the voltage drop to find exactly the source of the problem in this test, that the result was too high. So always test the system. Don't just replace parts. Test, don't guess. If this helped you diagnose a starter issue, hit the like, subscribe, and share this with another tech. I'll be posting more real-world diagnostic tests just like this.